Hi, I'm Lee Richardson, and I want to get in your head today about what is going on. In the next couple of weeks, everybody is going to be going back to school. And that's a pretty stressful time for kids, for families, for parents. You know, if you're that kindergartner and you've got your first backpack and you're waiting for that big bus to roll up and pick you up, that can make you a little anxious. Or if you're in middle school and you've got that teacher that nobody likes. Or you're in high school and you've learned there's not one person that you really want to hang with that has lunch the same time you do. That only produces one word in my head, and that's anxiety. And that's, it's just not the kids, it's the parents too. Think about your parent, you have three or four kids and they've outgrown everything this, this year. They all need new school supplies. You know, that's a, that can be pretty expensive, the finances can. And now you can't drop them all off at the same place. You have two or three schools that you have to go to. And you've got to start thinking about where are they going to do their homework? You know, now they're in different grades. Logistics, just day-to-day -day things. And here today to help us figure all that out is Jennifer McDaniel. And Jennifer is on the executive team with the Dallas Moms blog. And she's going to talk to us a little bit, tell us about the Dallas Moms blog and Tell us about if there's any anxiety in her house right now. Sure, absolutely. Thank you so much for having us this morning. We are so happy to be part of the segment. Thank you for coming. Yeah, of course. Um, so I am from the Dallas area. I grew up in Plano. Um, my husband and I both did. Um, we have two young girls. Um, they're three and six. So I have one that just finished her first year in elementary school. We got through it. We made it Yay. through kindergarten. Um, so now we're off to first grade. Um, so there's definitely some anxiety in my house. Um, I mean, even, unfortunately, um, I deal with a little bit of anxiety, and I think I've probably passed a little bit of that on to my daughter. Um, so I can definitely see that in her already. Um, you know, a couple things that happened last year. Um, she's nervous about starting first grade and how that will look, whether or not, you know, how it will be different. Um, you know, it's because she's never gone back to school. She doesn't understand, you know, it's the same kids. It's just, you know, a different classroom, new teacher, um, that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, just kind of getting her to a point where she's comfortable with the idea um, has been challenging. We've, you know, we've we've bought some books from, um, from Amazon, um, you know, the night before first grade, that kind of thing to kind of um, eliminate some of that anxiety or to try to. Um, and she says she's feeling better about it. So we'll see. We'll see how that first day goes. Um, my husband just informed me that he's out of town um, for the first day of school. So, so um, that makes you a little bit It anxious. does. It does. Because I know it's going to be, um, it's probably going to be kind of hard. Yeah. It's going to be a hard morning for her. So, but that's okay. We'll get but through you know, it. I think you're really taking a good approach. You're talking about it. You're, you're trying to set her up for success. We do. And I think that's really important. And to stop and think about before that first day arrives, what can I do to make this easy for my kids? Right. You know, I'm thinking about, gee, what do I need to pack for her snacks? Uh -huh. What's good brain food? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are, that's, I mean, I would love to know. I would love to know what you think about that too. Um, you know, knowing what the, if, if there is, if there are things that are more beneficial than others for those types of well, we things. all know that omega threes uh -huh. are really important, but where you get those omega threes is like salmon. I can't imagine the first grader <laughs> pulling out a, probably, a yeah. piece of salmon for lunch. <laughs> she probably wouldn't eat that day. <laughs> no, and you know one of the things that I see is we overthink it, and moms will work so hard to pack these unbelievable lunches. Yes, but then the kids won't eat them. Right, and then they bring it home, and then that creates tension in the family. Right. Why didn't but you your lunch? It's confusing because yeah. we all know that carbs, you know, might make you a little sleepy, mm -hmm. but I never knew a banana could make you sleepy. You know, bananas full of magnesium, right. and potassi potassium, and both of those are very calming agents. A lot of people take magnesium before they go to bed to help oh, them fall really? asleep. Oh, I didn't mm -hmm. realize that. So that hmm. food question it can be confusing. Things like walnuts, mm -hmm. kiwi, those have omega-3s. You know, nuts are a source of protein. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to, most important is know what works for your kid. Right. You know, some kids can eat sugar and it doesn't bother them at all. Right. Some kids eat sugar and up the wall They're they They're bouncing go. off the walls. Yeah. yeah. Well, and so many of the schools now are nut free. So it's it because can also be kind of challenging. Yeah. 
um, to figure out what to put in their lunches. Um, you know, you have to ensure that it's something they're going to eat. Mm -hmm. You also want it to be healthy um, so that it kind of sustains them through their day. So it's But it's you make a good hard. point, you know, because a lot of times I can remember in the lunchroom sharing my lunch. Right. And you share your walnuts to somebody that has an allergy. It'd be terrible. It would be terrible. Yeah. That'd be emotional trauma for both of them, mm -hmm. you know. That's not the way to start your school year. Right, exactly, yeah. You know, I think the best way to start your school year is with your sleep. Sleep is so important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I remember when I, my kids in the summer, they certainly had flexibility when they went to sleep. Mm -hmm. and, and the older they got, the more the flexibility they had. But sleep is, is key. Because right. all day long, you've got these little neurons and dendrites ch -ch 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 -ch, wiring and firing up here. Mm -hmm. And when they're doing that, they're creating toxic waste. And the only time that these little glial cells, like those little scrubbing bubbles mm -hmm. you, know, you see mm -hmm. on TV, ch -ch -ch -ch, they come out and they clean that up is when you're asleep. Oh, really? So sleep so is, interesting. is more important than just just so you're not irritable. Right. When your girls don't get enough sleep, how does it affect them? Oh, my goodness. My family, I have always been with my firstborn um, uh, from the very beginning. I've always been pretty militant about our schedule, and um, it probably stems from me being anxious and type A and all of that. But um, I like a schedule. I like a routine a whole lot. So I've always been really serious about bedtimes and things like that. And in the summer, um, you know, there, of course there are exceptions now that, especially now that my girls are getting a little older, the three-year-old is, a, it's a little easier to keep her up, um, you know, past her normal bedtime without meltdowns, but it definitely impacts our, our day the next day. It's not necessarily right then, which is why it's hard for some people to understand mm -hmm. because you don't see it when you're keeping them up at night. It's the next day. It's the aftermath <laughs> that you have to deal with. Um, all of the crazy, you know, meltdowns and tantrums and whining and arguing. And it just, it makes for a bad day for everybody. So um, when you mix in a, you know, an eight hour day of school, I, I just, I mean, I have a hard time getting through an eight hour day um, if I haven't slept well. So I know that, you know, my growing kids, um, it's got to be so much worse for them. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm a little bit more lax during the summer, but I'm serious about it during school. We are in bed at bedtime and that's, that's it. And that's really for good sleep. That's what it's all about. You have a protocol that you follow. Makes a difference. It does make a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. Are there things that, are there whining, warning signs that you might see, you know, when your kids start to get tired? Do they start to melt down? Are there things that you kind of have in your mind, this checklist, oh, saw that? Yes, for sure. The whining um, is number one in our house. Um, it just, uh, our kids are, we're pretty, we're pretty lucky. We're really blessed. Our, our kids are pretty well behaved for the most part. But when we push them past that point, mm -hmm. um, they definitely, the, the arguing, the whining, it all kicks up. Um, and those are kind of my signals. I'm home with, with my girls, um, and it's, it's, it's very easy for me to see those signals just because I, I am around them so much. So um, I pick up on them right away, and I'm like, okay, it's, it's time. Yeah. We're out of here. So You know, yeah. and your girls are fairly young. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to believe that they're so young that they're not using FaceTime and, and, and a phone but, you know, an iPad is a learning tool that mm -hmm. we have. Yeah. And what I hear from a lot of, the, of my clients is concern about we're going to have to completely rethink our schedule. You know, it, he's been playing video games for three, three and a half hours yeah. a day. Yeah. And I'm sure that's something that the Dallas moms are concerned about, too. I've heard a lot of talk about that, um, especially this summer. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know too much about it, but there's a game called Fortnite mm -hmm. that I think is pretty popular. I know a lot of kids are spending time on that this summer. And it is. It's, I mean, it's hard, especially with the heat here in Texas. You're trying to keep your kids entertained and, you know, from killing each other over the summer and driving you crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times that's what they want to do. So it's hard because you either have a battle on your hands or, um, you know, or you give in and let them. So it, it, it's hard. It's, it's a difficult balance. And while we don't do the video games and things like that, we definitely have the, the iPads and the screen, you know, TV and things like that. Um, so I do try and limit it to, you know, two or three hours a day at most. 
Um, but during the school year, they really don't get a lot um, and definitely not before bed. I know I've, I've read and I don't know, you could probably, um, you know, tell me how much truth there is to it. But I've read two to three hours before bedtime to shut all screens and things like that off because it just um, it's hard for the brain to shut down after after seeing those things. Is that true? That is true. And I think, you know, there's a and I, I'm not saying that there no, no video games, but I'm saying you know, look at those video games, see what happens, because they're all rated by age and content. Right. And a lot of times, you know, all I want for my birthday, all I want for my birthday is this game. Mm -hmm. How do you know about that game? Well, Johnny has it. Oh, okay. And then you get it. You don't check out the age level. Right. You don't check out the content. And he brings it in and you, it catches your eye. Right. And like, whoa, yes. what is that? Yeah. You know? I, I know so many, um, I've heard stories about um, YouTube specifically for, there. I guess there's a kid's um, YouTube no, channel that is specific to, to young kids. And I have heard horror stories about, you know, you put your kids on something like that and you assume that it's all going to be appropriate content. Um, but I've heard from several parents that they just, you know, like it was, the sound was in the background and they heard um, something that just didn't sound quite right. And then mm -hmm. when they, you know, started looking at it a little closer, it was terrible. I mean, it was inappropriate for adults. Um, well, I mean, you know what I mean? Not inappropriate for adults, but... Um, but adults was, and their children. Yeah, together. definitely disturbing to kids. Definitely inappropriate. The language, the um, there's a lot of violence. So it's just, I mean, it's crazy. You can't be too careful nowadays. There's you know all you, kinds of stuff. You make such a good point because this year, if I had kids, I would have a higher level of concern about going back to school because of the school violence. Yes, last year, absolutely. And I was watching TV the other morning on the treadmill. And I see a bulletproof backpack. I can't believe that. And that just, that just, you know, that made me anxious yeah. to think that I would, but to think that my kid would need a bulletproof right. backpack, but by golly, I'd, I'd get him one, you know? Right. Because if you thought it was really necessary. Because you don't know. Right. You really don't know. so terrifying and heartbreaking. It is. And I think that that kind of, on a subconscious level, that exists. And what that does is it creates a level of anxiety for kids, for parents, right? I would not want the school administrator job right now. No, because you know they're talking about that and they're thinking about it's that. All over. Because they want to make it the nurturing, safe, mm -hmm. comfortable place. Yes, uh, for your kids to go to school, and that's become a bigger challenge. Yes, than it has been in the past. For sure, I hate. Um, you know, this last year in kindergarten, um, my daughter came home and said that they did a lockdown drill. And it just, like my stomach just sank because she said those words. She, I asked her, I said, oh, what is that? And she knew. She said it's when somebody bad comes into the school um, and they might hurt us, so we have to hide. That, I mean, it broke my heart to hear her say that. It was terrible. So I just hate that our kids are hearing those things and, you know, going through the motions to, to I mean, of course it's necessary in this world, unfortunately, but... I hate that they know that's what that is, that it's even on their radar, because they're just, they're too little to, to have to think about that. But. They are, but unfortunately, they do. I know. You know, that's a big, I think that's a big issue this year, thinking about going back to school, is personal safety. You know, and I think some of the other issues, if you had shared a story with me about a mean girl incident mm -hmm. um, with your daughter, and the bullying. And yes. Yeah, she um, I, she tends to be kind of an anxious kid anyway. Um, she was nervous about starting kindergarten, but she was also excited. And I was fully expecting on that first day of school to have to drag her in kicking and screaming, peel her off my arm, you know, the whole nine yards. And she was one of the only kids that didn't. Um, and I was so proud of her. I was so happy. Um, it just makes it so much easier, you know, as a parent to drop them off knowing they're happy, they're, you know, they feel um, safe and calm and, you know, everything's good. And um, probably three or four months into school, um, there we did, we had a little bit of, of a, um, an incident with, or incidences, I guess. Um, there were several days where I guess there was some bullying happening and she's, um, my, my daughter, my oldest daughter, she's 
very sweet. She wants everyone to be her friend. Um, she's the kid that if you give a mean and, or dirty look to, she falls apart. I, I don't, I don't necessarily even have to give her a consequence. I just threaten one and she will, you know, kind of jump back to where she's supposed to be. So, um, if, if somebody is being, you know, unkind, it really, really affects her. And that's what was happening. It was just a lot of, uh, things that were, that were said to her that weren't very nice. Um, and it really affected her. And I saw a huge change in her behavior at those drop-off times every morning. Um, it started to become very difficult for my husband and I to drop her off without crying and want somebody from the staff at school having to come and peel her off our arms. Um, and it was awful. I mean, it broke my heart. I broke down several times because it just, it was so hard to drop her off you know, seeing her like that. And they, they, fortunately her teacher said, you know, she would email me and say, Hey, you know, she calms down after, um, after, you know, just a couple minutes. It's just that initial, but it really does affect kids when, you know, things like that are going on. Um, and it's hard, it's hard to deal with that as a parent. Um, especially, you know, in, in situations like my daughter where her personality is just so sensitive and, you know, so she's just an anxious anxious kid. And it's hard to know how to handle that. It's hard to know, you know, how to help her. And we did talk to the school counselor and got her involved and she sat down with her and, um, she helped us for a little while. And there was, there were reward, there was a reward system in place, both at home and at school. Mm -hmm. Um, so that really helped. It kind of helped us get over the hump, but I couldn't volunteer at school anymore. Um, I was actually the room mom and I couldn't, um, I couldn't, there was, there were several parts of the day where you could go and help with, you know, different things in the classroom. I had to stop doing that. I couldn't go to lunch with her anymore because she would get upset all over again. Um, and so I just didn't, I didn't want to do that in the middle of her day. So, um, so I hated that. It was awful. Um, I'm just praying that that has kind of settled down. It did level off the, there's not an issue with, um, you know, the, the child anymore. Um, so I'm hoping that, First grade is clean slate, and we can we can we'll just glide right on through. <laughs> I'm just amazed at how many adults that I've worked with will talk about the bullying that happened in school. Yeah, and it's it's emotional trauma, right? And emotional trauma lives in the brain. Yes, you know. So it's it's amazing to me how often and how much of that is going on. Yeah, because when I think of bullying, I used to think about you know physical, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's the verbal, right? And, and it's that mental that really can bring you down. It, uh, yes, I think that's absolutely true. I know I heard somebody told me one time, and I think it's absolutely true, somebody can tell you, uh, you know, 10 things about yourself. Nine of them can be positive and one can be negative. You won't remember any of the positive, but that one negative thing will just stick with you, and it's the one thing you remember. It's and it's true. It's yeah. really true. So... And, you know, you have to let go of these things, and letting go has to do with change. And that's when I think of, in my history, what back to school meant. It's change. Mm -hmm. It's change in the way we do everything. Yes, yes. You know, it's change in where I drop you off and where I pick you up. And luckily I had twins, mm -hmm. so I didn't so have You only that. had to do it once. I only had to do it <laughs> once. But, e but even still, you know, one has this after-school activity and the right. other has this after-school activity. And, you know, coming in that door, it's like they're just, they're exhausted, they're hungry, they yes. throw their stuff down, then we get a snack, okay, homework time, right. I can't find this, I can't find that. So, you know, back to school is all about change. Yes. And my advice for everyone that has to, to deal with that change is manage it. Don't let it manage you. Mm -hmm. That's you good know, advice. Where are you gonna Where are you gonna dump your stuff when you come in? Right. And where are you gonna do your homework? Having twins, we could not both do homework at the kitchen table at the same time. Oh, really? Oh no. They distracted each they other. They were boys. Yeah. Um, you know. <laughs> Enough said. You see something <laughs> flick across the table. Or, right. Yeah. So as parents, you know, I'm sure that's something that. Everybody has their own challenges, mm -hmm. and that's kind of how Dallas Moms blog came to be, isn't it? Tell uh, us a little bit about that. So Crystal Hurst is the owner, and she uh, she came to own the site. So let me back up a little bit. Dallas Moms blog is part of a national um, organization called City Moms Blog, um, and 
And through City Moms blog, there are different, there are sister sites all over the country um, in most major cities. Um, that and the the mission of Dallas Moms Blog and all the other sister sites around the country is to connect parents and their community. So Dallas Moms Blog, we we do that through thoughtful blog posts on our our blog. We we do those daily um, and through our newsletter and then through community events, which is um, what I do for Dallas Moms Blog and Collin County Moms Blog. Collin County is a sister site um, of Dallas, so. Um, we will plan events throughout the year. Uh, we'll do fun mom's night out events. Um, we do family events that are very popular. Um, and we'll do, so occasionally we'll do a date night. Um, you know, it kind of, it kind of just depends on what's going on throughout the year. But the main, the main goal is to, to bring moms or parents in the community that are in the same season of life together. So, so do you have parents with kids of all ages? Is it more focused on the early years? No, it really is all over the map. I, that was something that really surprised me when I came on three years ago was it's not. It's not just the new parents. It's um, it's everybody. It's new parents. It's, um, you know, it's older parents that have grown children. Um, because really the um, kind of the the theme that I, the reoccurring theme that I've seen over the years is that people want that group of people. They, they want somebody that can relate to them and relate to what they're going through. So it's not even necessarily about the kids. It's more about the friendships that they're making through, um, you know, going to these events and, um, you know, connecting and plugging in where they can. So well, it's you bring been up very a good interesting. Point because once your kids get past middle school, you don't make, you know, before, your friends, their friends, are friends of your friends' right, exactly. kids. Right, exactly. But once you get to middle school, that goes away, and you don't have that right. that sense of community. Yes, yeah, it's so important. And I know I've I've been so shocked to see, um, specifically at our events, um, I, I'm so happy to see all of these women that will come on their own. Um, you know, and they're they're really just they're they're trying to meet people. And I, I've talked to so many people that have met their you know some of their best friends at some of these events, which just you know, it makes us so happy. It makes us feel like what we're doing really matters. Um, and, you know, and that's why we keep doing it. So. so if somebody wants to know how, when these events are or how to go, how do they get that information? So a couple of ways. You can find us on Facebook. Um, it's Dal at Dallas Moms Blog. Uh, and then there's the sister site is at Collin County Moms Blog. There's, you don't have to live in Collin County or Dallas to attend the events. Anybody can come. So, um, so you can find us on Facebook. We post all of our events um, on Facebook. We'll, we'll have a specific event page for each event that we have coming up. We actually have an event coming up on September 20th. Um, it is an 80s themed um, mom's night out. So um, you can grab your puffy sleeves and scrunchies. And um, it's going to be super fun. We'll have a bartender and um, DJ and all kinds of fun stuff planned. Um, so for instance, that you could go on Facebook and click on the events tab and you'll see that totally eighties mom's night out tab um, and, and you see all the details there. there yes, we do release tickets for all of our events and it is limited, um, to a certain number depending on the event. So you definitely want to follow along and, um, you know, just keep watch for, for the, um, the link to register if you're interested in attending. And then you can also go to dallasmomsblog.com. Um, which is our website where you can find all of our blog posts. You can find the archived blogs if there's a specific topic that you're looking for. Um, there's a search engine you can go back, you know, as far as from the very beginning um, and look at all, you know, all kinds of topics uh, that we've covered over the years. And then you can sign up for our newsletter there as well so you don't miss anything. So it's really easy to become a part of the group Absolutely. and to keep up to it to speed with what's going on. Absolutely, yes. You can stay connected definitely through our site. Um, we do have a team of uh, 30 writers that are contributors, and they um, we bring them on every, um, not every year, They uh, some, you know, life happens and some mm -hmm. will move on. Um, mm -hmm. And every year we have a few openings. So if writing is something that people are interested in, that's an option too. Um, you know, we have new contributors that come on every year that just like to have that outlet or they have their own blog that they're trying to, um, you know, get out there, things like that. So, um, so yeah, there's, there's several different ways that you can, you can get involved. So, well, it sounds like it's a huge resource. If you've got kids going back to school this year and you're really 
have got a lot on your mind, or you're, or you're new to town. Do you know how many people are moving I know. on a daily basis to North Texas? Yes. It is crazy. For those type of people, there's a lot of information probably that could help them make their back to school time a little bit easier. Absolutely. Back to school is a big um, topic for us on the website. We have guides that will uh, go through different preschools by area. Um, you can see, you know, what the top rated preschools in your area are, um, you know, where the best deals are to shop. Um, our writers, they, they try to focus on things that um, make sense for, you know, whatever's happening. So right now that's back to school. So we have a lot of content for that, that's going to relate to that. That's great. That is that is great. Well, I is anything else that you'd like to share with us about for, for moms or dads or kids about getting ready to go about back, back to school? To school. Um, I think, you know, I think if everybody can just, you know, take a step back and everybody take a deep breath. We do it every year. Um, it's, you know, getting through that initial day or two um, can be challenging, but then it all kind of levels off and we get into a groove again. And it's great until the next summer when we, you know, kind of panic because we don't know what to do with the kids. It's all about change. So if you can get past that initial hump, um, then you're good. You got this. You know, and, and I think I'd, in closing, I would just like to say, if you can think about how you set your child up for success mm -hmm. and how you set you up for success, mm -hmm. it can really go a long way. Be proactive. You've got two weeks before school starts. Right. You know, have you driven by the school? That's where you're going to go to school next year. Yes. You know, have you? if you've got an anxious or a sad child, take them in. Yeah. Show them this is where the counselor's office is. Right. If you need help. This is where the school nurse is. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do everything that you can to start keep conversation flowing. Yes. So how do you feel about that? Right. Are you worried about that? Right. Um, I think all of those things, what you do up front, the return will be huge. Yeah, I agree. I was reading an article yesterday, um, and that it was actually that was the advice um, for kids that are a little bit nervous about starting the new year. Um, even if it's a school where they're returning, mm -hmm. um, to that it can often help if you walk to school or, like you said, you know, drive there, um, show them where you're going to drop them off. You know, just kind of go through the motions as much as you possibly can to kind of relieve that stress and and so that the first day isn't the first time they're doing it. Um, so I thought that was really good advice because I'd never thought about doing that because we went to school there all year last year. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's a great idea. So. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Of course. Yes, thank I you for having me. I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Well, thank you all for joining us today. And if you'd like to learn more about what we talked about, or if you have a child that is experiencing anxiety, depression, or ADHD, and are looking for ways to help that child without medication, you can get more information on my website, which is thebrainperformancecenter.com. Or you can call. We offer complimentary consultations, uh, 30 minutes. And you can call 817-500-4863 and set that up. Thanks for being here.